This week on Around the Corner, we're in Bentonville at 21C. And 21C actually stands for 21st Century because right inside of that hotel, there's actually an art museum and all of the artwork is contemporary. All right, let's talk about the origin story here. Founders, Louisville, Kentucky, they've got this art collection and they want to make it accessible to the public. 11 years later. And eight locations later, we're here in Northwest Arkansas. Fun fact, me and my husband, we actually came and looked at the art on our first date. It's a love story. Let's head inside. All right, so as soon as you walk inside, you're walking right into the art gallery as well. And because it is a fully functioning hotel, that means that they're open 24-7, 365 days a year, encouraging you to come and check out the art. Yeah, and the art exhibits that we're going to see today, they change once a year. Want to take a look? Let's do it. Oh, hello there. By now, some of you have recognized there's green penguins in here. There's a reason for that. Yeah, they're actually a part of the exhibit. There's about 15 of these sculptures around the hotel, and they encourage you to have fun, be interactive, and maybe even take them with you around the hotel. Yeah, you could take them to dinner, and for those staying, you might even find one in your hotel room. All right, let's go. All right, and a treat for those that'll be staying here at the hotel, when you step out of the elevator onto your floor, you're gonna notice some more art on the walls that's featuring local artists. And even if you're not staying here, you can still get a treat. You can head here to the high for some local cuisine, and you can even bring your special friend. Table? Yeah, I guess that's gonna do it for us this week on Around the Corner. Hey, look, another penguin, let's join him. Let's do it. I'm sitting over here. <laughs> Get over there. <laughs> <laughs>before it got its name, this dirt road was the original Walton Boulevard. Of course, this is what it looks like today. And while many things have changed, one thing has remained the same. This house right behind us. Yeah, this is Pill Mansion, built 10 years after the Civil War. Inside are lots of artifacts from then a prominent family in Northwest Arkansas. Let's go check it out. Now, the only reason we get to stand in this grand foyer here today is because the community came together in the 1990s and decided to restore this home to its original glory. Yeah, and within each room, you get to learn about each member of the Pale family and who they were. So let's start with the wife, Mary Emmeline. When visiting the Pill family, the first place that you would walk into is this room right here, the parlor. It's a place that you would come to drink tea and maybe even catch up on life. Well, as you can see, the pink wallpaper, it has Mary Emmeline written all over it. Well, who is Mary Emmeline? She's the lady of the household, and she spent a lot of her time in here hosting guests as her husband Samuel was gone in D.C. chasing his political career. Now, fun fact about this is her favorite color was pink. I can relate to that one, but that's because she was born on Valentine's Day. This was Samuel Pill's personal study after the Civil War. He came back home here. Now, he did serve four terms in U.S. Congress, so he was gone quite a bit, but when he was home, he was in this office. Now, there are a lot of things in here, his personal items, like this wallet that his grandkids say he used to set out on the porch and hand them nickels out of it. After serving in Congress, he actually started practicing law. A lot of the law that he would practice would be for the native tribes in hopes of them obtaining and keeping their own land. Above the fireplace, you'll find a picture of Samuel Pill. Now, through that hallway right there is the dining room where you'll find Sam Pill's monogram china from his time serving in Congress, but the kids couldn't even get in there until they were at least 13 years old. Now, where they could go, up here. 
Now, one of the coolest things that I have seen is this right here. This is Bucky, the original rocking horse that the Pills Boys played with back in the 1800s. And even going cooler than that, they continue to pass it down generation to generation, five generations of kids continue to saddle up and give old Bucky a ride, and it's still holding on today. All right, you know the drill. We've only given you just a taste of what this place offers. They do have more. There is an event space. And also, they've got things going on throughout the year that you can bring your family to. Yeah, and you can't see it right now because it's winter, but on the grounds there's a botanical gardens. You'll definitely want to check that out in the spring and summer. A lot of neat things to see here, but that's it for this week. We'll see you next time on Around the Corner. On this week's episode of Around the Corner, we're learning about the history of Rogers. Yeah, everything that went into making it what it is today is right here at the Rogers Historical Museum. Guys, we love museums. Especially, Especially you. <laughs> Can we go now? Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. You ever wonder where Rogers gets its name from? It's because of this right here. The San Francisco Rail Company is coming through Northwest Arkansas, but where are they gonna put the tracks down? The general manager at the time is trying to figure that out, C.W. Rogers. The people living here, they rush out. They're like, pick us, pick us. We'll name our town after you. So May 10th, 1881, the first railroad track runs through Rogers. That's a picture of the train coming into town right there. Now at that time, apple production was booming here. That dominates the cargo on the trains until bugs, disease, weather cripples the production of the apples. Doesn't slow the people down, they pivot towards poultry, and we know where that got us today. Have you ever wondered if any prominent people came out of Rogers or even Benton County? Well, the answer is yes, and this exhibit will tell you all about them, like Edsel Ford, who was a published author. Some of his work is here. And then one of the most interesting is Louise Thaden. Now, you know the name Thaden because of Thaden School, even Thaden Airport. Well, Louise Thaden, she was an aviatrix, even friends with Amelia Earhart. You know Amelia's story because she disappeared. It made headlines, but Louise here, she actually competed against Earhart and she would win a lot. There's some pictures here of her back in the day, 1920s at the Women's Air Derby. Now this exhibit is gonna tell you all about her and her story. Many others who come from Benton County and Rogers, you definitely wanna check it out. Chances are you've heard about Beaver Lake, but have you heard about Montanay? Well, it's a resort town that's completely underwater at the lake. So let's set the scene. It's the early 1900s. William Harvey moves from Chicago to Northwest Arkansas, buys 300 acres of land, and decides he wants to make a resort town. This right here, Montanay. They had their own post office, their own school, their own bank, and they even had the first indoor swimming pool. Sounds like a pretty cool place, right? First indoor swimming pool in the state. Well, this was a happening spot for about two decades, but unfortunately, Harvey got into some financial troubles. From there, he sold the place off, but unfortunately, it was kind of let go after that. So let's fast forward, it's the 1960s, Beaver Lake is being built, and they completely flood the remaining parts of Montanay. Now, there are still some parts that you can see at the Beaver Lake that we know today. This is some of it right here that's covered up now by water, but when the lake gets low, you can sometimes see some of the steps. In addition to the permanent exhibit highlighting the history of Rogers, they also have temporary ones here, like this one highlighting the toys all the way back to the 1800s to the 2000s. Yeah, some of you still upset about the lines y'all were in for the Cabbage Patch doll and the Tickle Me Elmo. Yes, yeah, so if you want to be reminded about those potential fights you got into, you can come and check out this exhibit, but not for long. It closes after Saturday, so come out this weekend. But the good news is they have more exhibits on the way. The next one coming is about the age of alcohol and the prohibition. I'll have to see that one. All right, we'll see you next time on Around, Around the, the Corner. Corner. This week on Around the Corner, we're in Fayetteville at the Arkansas Air and Military Museum at Drake Field. Yeah, if you're into tanks, planes, trucks, it all can be found here. You can explore dozens. And while you're exploring, you can also check out the history of aviation through our cans and eyes. Oh, we've got our wings on. Check. Now, let's fly. Come on, let us like the door. It's all in the wrist. <laughs> oh. 
All right, so what you're gonna find here is the history of Arkansas aviation. Going back to 1910, shortly after the Wright brothers, they had their flight, we saw ours in Fort Smith. You're gonna get to learn about these pilots up close and personal, like Field Kinley here, out of Pea Ridge, he's considered Arkansas's first ace, where he flew in World War I and had 12 confirmed kills. Yeah, and you're gonna even learn about more Arkansas pilots, like Pierce McKinnon here, who flew in Nazi Germany. You can see some of his actual artifacts, like his jacket, the compass, you get to see it up close and personal. He was even known for painting a Razorback on the side of his plane honoring the home state. And speaking of Razorbacks, have you ever heard of the flying Razorbacks? Well, local legend Max Hall, he actually came up with the name for his squadron while piloting helicopters. So a really neat thing about this is he was so proud of his home mascot. They helped paint this on the side of their helicopter door. He made sure that this door went on every single mission with him, no matter the helicopter. So dedicated to the cause that he actually saved this door after a helicopter crash in a jungle. All right, so this is the massive hangar, the show floor, where you get to see everything up close and Oh, yeah, it's really neat. I bet Zach, wait, where is Zach? I don't think you're supposed to be up there. I asked. It's okay. Now let's do a picture break. All right, stop focusing on me. You're going to want to check all this out. Some of the treasures you're gonna find here on this tour, like this 1947 Air Coupe. This just isn't a regular 1947 Air Coupe. No, no, no. This is Sam Walton's 1947 Air Coupe, purchased back in 1954 for only $1,800. This so-called safe and docile airplane only requires minimal flying experience. They say it's as simple as driving a car. Now this right here is an infamous Learjet. Come take a look. Do you know who Barry Sills is? Maybe the story down in Mina of the drug runs and the drug cartel. Well, Barry Sills owned this plane. Maybe you've seen the movie American Made. If not, the tour guides here will tell you all about the story and what maybe went on inside this plane. After that, it was used in air shows. And while you're on the tour, you'll make a stop in this hangar that's full of military planes and vehicles. How about story time inside a Vietnam helicopter? Yeah, they call it Soaring Stories, or you could say, Reading Takes Flight. Oh, I think they actually say that. We're wrapping up our tour in the original terminal at Drake Field. Yeah, they've got more than 2,500 artifacts that they're rotating every six months. Yeah, you have to come learn about all this. We had a great time, right? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, we'll see you next time on Around, Around the, the Corner. corner. On this episode of Around the Corner, we brought you to a pretty unique place that you won't find much of in our area. Yeah, but we found it right here in downtown Rogers, the Honeycomb Kitchen Shop, and right inside, they do hands-on cooking classes. Yeah, their goal here is to encourage more of you to cook at home, and they're giving you the tools to do just that. You ready to cook? Yes. Let's do it. So hungry? You're always hungry. All right, so we've got our aprons on. Now we're going to get some help from the expert to cook the perfect meal. All right, that's going to be Miss Dana here with uh, Honeycomb, one of the owners. Mm -hmm. So what are we making today? Well, we thought it would be fun today to do some Super Bowl snacks, get yeah. everybody ready for the big game. And as with most of our cooking classes, we want to start with a cocktail. We're going to be making a, a, a beer Bloody Mary. Um, and we're going to use some of our Arkansas made Bloody Mary mix. We have a drink for each of you. And what we're going to do is take one of these lime slices and you're just going to run that around the edge of your rim. From the drinks all the way to. I need to get that honey off the bottom. Mm -hmm. All right, is this it? Cheers. Cheers. When you're done handcrafting your cocktail, it's on to the food. Yeah, so what's our next appetizer here? So we are going to make some seasoned crackers, and I love this recipe because you can make it ahead of time. You can use whatever seasoning that you want, so you can really make it your own when you're doing this at home. Today we're going to be using Spice Walla, their French Herbed Dijon seasoning. And we have here a bowl of oyster crackers, and I've already measured out three-quarter cup 
of canola oil. So we need four tablespoons of that seasoning to go in the oil. This is all about learning. I don't think so. Yes! We are doing these hot pepper cheese bites. We have a dough here that is a mixture of shredded cheese, flour, paprika, and salt. Um, and the trick with these is that you use a little mini muffin tin and you put your dough in and you're gonna do a little thumbprint in there. And they go in the oven and they bake for about 10 minutes. When they come out, they're gonna look nice. like this. Perfect. And then we wanna top them. We're gonna use, this is Deb's hot pepper jelly. And it's it, got a little bit of a balances the cheese. Mmm. Oh, good. So this one is super easy. We're going to do chicken bites with a high quality barbecue sauce. So we're using, this is a Montana Max barbecue. It's Big Sky Bourbon barbecue sauce. And it's super simple. We just cooked our favorite chicken bites, which you can use whatever you want. And you're going to do a little sauce over it. And the trick I feel like with getting the barbecue sauce is use a big enough bowl that you can really get a good coating oh. on there. Too. Back away, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, super easy. so as you come throughout the year, you'll make anything from... Like what we made here today, which is perfect for your Super Bowl party, by the way. To handcrafted pasta. Yeah, and there's a lot more to do here, guys. This is just one half of the place. Let's check it out. But do, I think we need to finish this here. Yeah, I'll okay. make sure. Yeah, I'll do, I get a plate, a table? <laughs> Well, these classes range anywhere from large settings with other aspiring cooks, or you can just grab a few friends. And when you come to these classes, you're going to learn those new skills from one of over 30 local chefs. Some of them might even be from one of your favorite restaurants. So just like their motto, they're inspiring you to cook more at home. As you become more comfortable in your kitchen, you'll be able to find many of the things you need here, but with an Arkansas flair. Yep, all right, that's it for us this time, but we'll see you next time on Around, Around the, the Corner. Corner. If you're a candy lover, which we are, Who right? <laughs> yeah, you're going to love this episode of Around the Corner. We brought you here to Copper Kettle Candies in Van Buren. It's been a locally owned business since the 1950s, and right inside, you can watch them make the candy, you can buy the candy, which I think we'll be doing because Valentine's Day just a few days away. Yeah, let's check out how the experts get it done, right? Let's do it. All right, when you first walk in, it's the showroom floor where all the good stuff is. And we found the owner, Thomas. Thanks for having us today. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. And we hear that there's a lot of good stuff to be seen, Thomas. So in the back, that's where they make it? Absolutely. Do you mind showing us? No, I love to. We use copper kettles because copper conducts heat better than stainless steel. So are these some that your grandma used? Yes. The ones with the smaller handles. Here are ones that my grandma and grandpa used. The ones with the larger handles are ones that my dad bought. We take these 10 pound bars of chocolate and we break them up and put them in our melters. Which I'm ready. Okay. Joe's ready. We're gonna take it to the back and put it into our chocolate melt. Oh, okay. That sounds fun. Can I carry it? Yes. <laughs> Let's do this. We take the caramel that we manufactured yesterday and we put it onto the belt. And if you'd like, I have some gloves and then you can do it yourself. Yes. Okay. We found the secret door. This is the fresh chocolate. Don't tell the owner. Uh oh, this is about to be an island. <laughs> Lucy it. moment. <laughs> Go faster! <laughs> Go faster! <laughs> It 
It's pretty open. You can see all of the candy being boxed up right here. And even during you know, special times during the season, like Christmas, you can watch the candy canes being made or the chocolate covered strawberries during the spring. And in the fall, those caramel apples. Well, right now we're getting ready for Valentine's Day and you can get these hearts right here. Fill them up with whatever chocolates you want. And the really neat thing is you can use these boxes year after year. Yeah, definitely. All right, Thomas, I think we got everything we need. Ring us up. Just a little bit here. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see you next time on Around, Around the, the Corner. Corner. This week on Around the Corner, we're in Rogers, where we're putting the pedal to the metal. Yeah, we're here at K1 Speed, where it's not just your typical bump and go go-kart. Yeah, this is a superior racing experience, and the fastest indoor electric go-karts are right inside. Guys, let's get to racing. Yeah, let's if you're go. not first, you're last. Wait, you have to be this tall to ride. All right, we're here with Buster, the man in charge. we got a couple questions for you. Is that okay? Let's hear them. All right, how fast do we get to go? Our carts go up to 45 miles per hour. Yes. Now oh, we can take fun. hers down a little no, bit for safety. We're going to have to. For safety. My Barbie Jeep, my dad took the safety off This of. ain't no Barbie Jeep. <laughs> how big is the track around? So our track ends up being about 919 lineal feet. Basically, you're going to get up to two miles of actual drive length when you okay. go around 12 times. All right, we're locked in and we're ready. All right, here rubbing is not racing, but let these horses run. Buster, drop that flag! like that a little extra competitive edge just like your local bowling league they have a monthly league the winner at the end of the year competes regionally maybe even nationally yeah you can even come out here and get some time one-on-one -on -one with an instructor who will teach you how to serve like a pro that's it for us we'll see you next time on around, around the corner, corner. On around the corner, we're big, big on Bentonville, where you can take a 90-minute personalized tour to find the ins and outs of this booming community. We're highlighting the architecture, the art, the food, the history, and the entertainment. Guys, let's roll. Do it. Hello there. Hey. Hello, Welcome good sir. Welcome aboard. You bet. Let's go. On us. Highlighting a culinary experience and history all rolled into one. We've got the Preacher's Son. Yeah, it was the oldest church in Bentonville and they turned it into a restaurant. And if the scenery inside wasn't enough with the wood ceilings and the stained glass windows, it gets better. They have a speakeasy underneath the restaurant and a rooftop bar. Guys, let's keep rolling. We're just getting started. This is one of the most interesting homes in Bentonville. So this home on the corner 
was the original hospital of Bentonville, and now this is a private residence. Well, every week, uh, through the uh, efforts of Dave and Jenny Mars on Fixer to Fabulous, America gets to see this amazing community on their uh, re uh, remodeling show, Fixer to Fabulous. And you can see some of the elements that are pretty typical of a Fixer to Fabulous home, the centered door, the flower boxes out front. And one of the things that they always do in closing the session is she puts out an American flag as a tribute to her father and grandfather. Hands up, play my song, know it's gonna be okay. Yeah, it's a party in the NWA. On this stop, we're taking a look at art and architecture. This is the Ledger, the first and only bikeable building in America. Yeah, that artwork is called Lakes and Rivers. It's powered by the sun and the wind. Yeah, the smaller fish highlights the six million Americans that kayak lakes and rivers in the U.S. in 2006. The bigger one, 18 million Americans in 2020. Also, the big fish, the size of a blue whale. Oh, that's, that's, cool. Pretty, cool. that's pretty cool. All right, the tour ends here for you. We're going to continue on, but make sure you give a big on Bentonville a call. Take your own tour. And after Bobby. That'll do it for us this week on Around, Around the, the Corner. Corner. On this episode of Around the Corner, we're putting our artistic ability to the test. Or we're kind of, I guess, checking to see if we have some first. Yeah, yeah, ours is questionable, but we are here on Imagine Studios in Rogers, and we're going to test out those painting abilities. Yeah, and, and again, we all know by now, Joe is the most artistic of all of us, but it doesn't mean we still can't have fun. You can try. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, let's do it. Hi. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Miss Melanie here, the owner. Hi. Thanks so much for having Thanks. us. Hey, I'm so us. glad you're here. Good yes, morning. we're so excited. So what are we going to be doing today? We're going to be painting pottery. So if you will follow me, we will go over here. You bet. And as you step in the room, you can see there's pottery choices all down the wall. You can go and make your selection. And once you've selected it, then we will start getting paint. All right, we picked out our pieces. What's next? Awesome. So everything on the table is going to be your paint brushes. You've got rinse water, paper towels. So clean, dry brush when you start painting. You're going to need to pick your paint. Each little cubby has colors. Look at the tile on front. That's the color it will be after it's fired. Okay, ready to get started. You have your paints. Does anybody have any other questions? Um, for those of us who aren't artistic, how do we make this look like we are? I like how you paint it. Oh, no, it's both of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's really just when you are painting, make sure you use a couple coats of paint and um, little brush for little things, big brush for big things, and then the detailer bottles are great and any oopsies can be covered up. just to finish up with our stuff here but there's so much more like you could have your birthday party here they do groups as well camps all of it yeah lots of events all year long uh, again you can do the pottery like we've done you can do infused glass they got a pottery wheel you can do door hangers i like the pottery wheel like in the movie ghost oh, yeah. yeah there's a lot you can do here including like you can even make cookie trays around christmas so you definitely want to come and check it out we had a good time this is what we made i think we did pretty good guys i think so all right well thanks for joining us we'll see you next time on around, around the, the corner, corner. Do 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 
On this week's episode of Around the Corner, we're getting a little taste of Italy, but in the middle of downtown Springdale. Yeah, it's called Zelli's. It's owned by a local family, and they have a pretty unique experience here. Something you can't get anywhere else. They make their own fresh pasta. Yeah, so let's head inside, meet the family, and even try our hands at making a little pasta. Yeah, let's do it. So most days when you walk in, you might get to meet the family that's running the whole show. We've got Mitchell, Angie, and Ari. Of course, Ari's the biggest help of them all. So we want to know, how do you make the pasta? Can you show us? Yes, I can. Let me give you an exclusive look. Come back here, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Exclusive. exclusive. First of all, our pasta is made with just two ingredients, um, all organic flour, it's grown in mills here in North America, and water. Uh, we've already got it to a point now where it's ready to extrude, so if y'all like to see it extrude. Let's get to extrude. Let's do it, right? Yeah. And our pasta is made using Italian-made bronze dyes, and if you get in close, you'll start seeing the texture. Oh, I do <laughs> see it. Usually we extrude our long pasta about 18 inches, yep. is how long our noodles are, and um, yeah. I'll just cut it here. What happens next with the pasta? Well, we can do two things. We can put it on this tray and put it in our fridge for you to buy fresh. Uh, we also dry our pasta uh, for the retail shelves as well. Uh, we dry our pasta the old traditional Italian way of doing it, which is slow drying. Do we get to package some pasta? Yeah, let's do it. All of our uh, box pasta is weighed to a pound and just starts with filling each box. So I usually flip my flaps back a little bit and grab some pasta and start filling it up. This is a, a, a wheel of Parmigiano Reggiano that we're cracking today. Parmigiano Reggiano. Unless you're making it at home, you're not getting fresh pasta daily, but your local neighbors are making it right here. And we promise that the pasta that you're getting, it's not what we made, but this is the dried pasta that we boxed, putting it on the shelves, and you can come and pick up some yourself. Yeah, that's right. Any shape and size here at Zelly's. That's it for us. We'll see you next time on Around, Around the, the Corner. Corner. On this week's episode of Around the Corner, we're here at the Quiver Archery Range in Bentonville. Yeah, they have the range out the back, and here you can try your hand at archery. We're gonna see today if we have the skills. Yeah, we're gonna have our inner Robin Hood. All right, let's try. Hi there, Jana. Thanks for having us today. Hi, you guys. Welcome to the Quiver. Are y'all ready to do some archery? We're let's ready. Do it. All right. So let's get you suited up with some bows. We're gonna go outside, do an orientation, make sure you know how to play safe with others, okay? Okay, so come on up. So do you have a favorite archer? Robin Hood. Cadmus Everdeen. You guys are gonna hang your bows up here on the rack and then come over to this blue line for some instructions. That's our arrow. These can be called flights or fletchings or veins. This one right here you'll notice is white and the other two are the same color. The white one's an index vein. So I like to say point your thumb down the arrow shaft, grab it right below the veins. You're gonna grab it out of your quiver. Make sure it's always pointed to the ground or a target. That white one, like we were talking about, points toward you. I'm gonna look at this clip on the end, which is a knock. I'm gonna clip it right underneath this indicator. Once I have it clipped into place, I'll sit it here on the rest and now it's loaded and ready to go. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Pretty good. Okay, so we just finished up practicing. Now it's time for the real thing, right? Yeah. We're gonna try those big old targets out there. I think we can do it. I hope so. Here we go. All right, after you. All right. 
right, and then elbow Zach, is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then go. Okay, now we're getting there. It's going to be a bullseye. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> That was good. That was like almost dead center. I did it! <laughs> Alright, it's not so bad. We just wrapped up. I think you're pretty good at this. Yeah, honestly, maybe archery is my new calling. I well, think so. Yeah, Let's so go. I got an eight, an eight, and a nine. Not too bad. Let's almost. look at Joe's. Almost. Three bullseyes? Almost. Mine's a little scattered, but not too bad. It's kind of close. So. You got an eight? That's pretty good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Pretty great. But the experts here, they really give you a lot of tips. Help you figure it out. You'll want to try it. Yeah, you definitely need to come check it out. We'll see you next time on Around, Around the, the Corner. Corner. This week on Around the Corner, we're doing something special. In honor of Easter, we're here at Eureka Springs. Yeah, you've probably heard of the Christ of those Ozark statue, but you probably didn't know that it's part of the Great Passion Play. Yeah, they've got 600 sprawling acres here with a lot to do from multiple museums, petting zoos, and amphitheater. Yeah, they even have a tour of the Holy Land, and we're going to do that first. Yeah, now there's going to be some really cool things that we're going to get to see. Things you've seen before, the Eastern Gate, the Tabernacle, the Tomb, even Bethlehem. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Hey, thanks for picking us up. Onward. They've even got a Sea of Galilee. I know, I wonder if we can walk on it. Well, I know a guy. When you finish up your tour of the Holy Land, you'll probably head to the amphitheater for the Great Passion Play. Well, you can actually get a backstage tour before the show. This is a look into Jesus' dressing room, and these are the costumes that he has that you'll see on the big stage. And when Jesus and the nearly 200 other actors are ready, they'll make their way out here to perform in front of up to 4,000 at a time and around 50,000 a year. Of course, we have to come see the Christ of the Ozark statue. Just take a look at it. Yeah, standing 67 feet tall with a 65-foot arm span, it's the third largest Jesus statue in the world. Yeah, and did you know that the face itself is 15 feet tall? That's pretty cool. I know. Should we take a selfie with it? Always. All right, now we have to head over and check out the overlook. Yeah, let's do it. Wow, would you look at that? Eureka! You can see the whole town from here. You can even see the Crescent Hotel. And when you're done taking in the beautiful sights, you can still do more. You can walk, hike, or even bike the trails 18 miles here on site. Yeah, well, that's going to do it for us this week. We'll see you next time on Around, Around the, the Corner. Corner. This week's Around the Corner, we're in the swing of golf season. Yeah, just like the Masters Tournament, it's a tradition unlike any other. So is Gator Golf in Fayetteville. Yeah, this is the oldest mini golf course in all of Northwest Arkansas. Yeah, so we're going to have a putt-putt tournament of our own where Zach's going down. Yeah, he is. Okay, what? Oh, I can't wait to get my green jacket. Let's go. Let's go. You actually aren't supposed to putt with your glove on, but you probably didn't know that. But yeah, I did, because some of us can actually play. I brought a tee. Hi. Hello. We're ready to play some yeah, gator, golf. gator golf. Oh, thanks, thanks for having, having us. us. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Pink always. Hello. 
It's tournament time. All right, who's going first? We'll okay. have to do rock, paper, scissors. Fine. All right, here we go. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay, <laughs> real quick, go. That's us. Done. Oh, Joe goes. Okay, so a little four, after four holes, we're doing a score check. Okay. Uh, uh, Joe has the lead on um, 10. Of course I do. So you, you, have, you have the lead by two strokes. Uh, I'm in second place with 12, and you have 14. up our mini golf tournament. Okay, so scores are in. Uh, with my hole in one, came back and I tied Joe. The hole in one Had to right? have it. Tiffany came roaring back with it a was stretch a good of You had one bad hole, you fell two strokes behind, but I you get second one. place because we're tied first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gator Golf here in Fayetteville, you have to check it out. You're going to love it. You want to break that tie? Bonus golf? So yeah. They lost. Yes. I'm third and alone again. We'll see you next time on Around the Corner. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. What is that? Yeah. The ball? I won. <laughs> I, was, I thought I was holding the ball. Okay, do it again. Hey, I didn't even know you have to keep that. It wasn't even that. On this week's episode of Around the Corner, we're here in Fayetteville putting our teamwork to the test. Oh man, we are at Ozark Escape. You remember the escape rooms firing up all across oh, five yeah. countries? So much fun. Yeah, definitely. And chances are, if you haven't been to one in a while, you'll find something new. They change out those rooms. These are great group activities. Yes, the we'll best. Let's try this one. <laughs> Guys, remember, everything's a clue. Everything's, everything's a clue. clue. Also, like Nick Cave said, <laughs> secret lives are Charlotte. Hey there. Hey. 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 Good. We want to see if we can escape one of these rooms. Yeah, yeah I think we're up for a challenge. All right, honors. Well, today y'all have been called out to investigate uh, the local mansion known as the uh, Violet Manor. So y'all have been called out by the rest of your crew to investigate this mansion and see if you can potentially find a ghost. Luckily for y'all, the rest of your team's already been here for a while, getting everything set up for okay. you. So they should be in here if you have any other questions. And uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, after y'all. Oh. oh yeah. No, you got me nervous. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good luck. What? We're out of time. We're already out of time. Let's go. There's a phone over there and a phone over here. Oh my gosh, we're uh, awful at this. Your recent actions have been weighing on me. I can't believe that you dropped Mother's brooch down the drain. Yeah. 
Guys, we did it. I'm so excited. We, we did, did it. it. We, we did, did it. it. We did it with a lot of help. Yeah. yeah. But we had some good ideas. We, we did a lot yes. of ourselves. The teamwork really we showed out today. Yeah. We figured out things on our own, and that good made, for me, bonding. made me feel good. Yeah, this is really cool. So you have to come check it out, right? We oh. can't give you all the, mm -hmm. the details. We can't reveal everything. So we're going to go, because we like to tell you. We'll see you next time on Around, Around the, the Corner. corner. On this week's Around the Corner, we brought you here to Tawny Town to the Historical Museum. Yeah, maybe you've been here for the famous Great Festival or even to eat at Mama Zeet's. But you're probably wondering, how did those traditions get started and why was the city founded? Yeah, it's rooted in a lot of heartbreak and a lot of history that's well recorded in this original home behind us. Let's check it out. All right, so while you're here, you're gonna have an expert that's gonna walk you through from the beginning to the end. But let me give you a quick rundown on how we got here. It goes back to the late 1800s. 98 Italian families lured to Southeast Arkansas with the promise they'll get a little bit of land for a little bit of work. Here's the contract. It's 12 and a half acres for 21 years of labor. Now they are promised they'll have the essentials to survive. Not the case. They get there, heartbreak, hardship soon follows. The graveyard is growing faster than the amount of Italians that are coming over. This guy right here, Father Bandini, he hears about his fellow countrymen, comes down from New York City, immediately says, uh-uh, this ain't happening. Essentially saves their lives, leads them to Northwest Arkansas, settles in what would become Tawny Town, and better days follow. This is one of the families, the Bassinellis, that came with Father Bandini. This is sisters Mary and Zelinda. This was their childhood home. And because they were forward thinkers, after they passed away, they wanted this home to be a museum filled with items from some of the original families in Tawny Town. You learn a lot of stories about the history of how this was all founded. Like this of the stained glass window that was in the first church built in Tawny Town. A storm came through, knocked it down, but they were able to save this piece of history among the many other stories being told here. Chances are you've heard of the Tawny Town Grape Festival, but it hasn't always been the famous grape ice cream, grape stock competitions, or even the carnival rides. In fact, it started back in 1898. That's the first year that the Italian settlers were here in Northwest Arkansas, and they decided to have a picnic to celebrate their new home, along with honor Father Bandini. Well, from there, they brought food that was native to their land in Italy, and surprisingly, there wasn't spaghetti, until one family that came from near Rome, and they brought spaghetti for the first time. Well, the people, they fell in love with it. It became a staple, giving us that spaghetti dinner that we know and love today at the Tawny Town Grape Festival. These are just some of the machines that women would use over the years to create the pasta, and as if the spaghetti wasn't enough, they decided they wanted to get more people to come to the area, and they wanted acceptance. So they started adding things like games, activities and hopes to get funding for the church as well as to make more friends here in Northwest Arkansas. Do you remember that stained glass window we showed you? Well, this was the side of the church. This one replaced it and they expanded even further with another church. So much history still visible. And if you ever want to come check out the Great Festival, it's here every year, every summer at St. Joseph's. Guys, who knew Tawny Town had so much history? It's pretty neat. That's going to do it for us this week. We'll see you next week on Around, Around the, the Corner. Corner. On this week's episode of Around the Corner, we're brought you here to the Shaw Family Park in Springdale. Now, this is where you can bring the family, stretch your legs a little. It's really big. One of the newest parks in our area. Yeah, it's 120 acres where you can come out. You can have fun with the family. There's things like tennis courts, a splash pad, walking trails, even a fishing pond. So, Zach, what do you want to do first? Let's do extreme fitness. Okay. We didn't Let's list go. that as an option. <laughs> it's on there, though. Yeah, but we were thinking we are going to pick something easier. Well, I'm not doing it. I want to see you do it. Ah, uh, no. Come on, ladies. It's the street sports. Get up here. No. What? I believe I can fly. Ladies, this one? No. no. Oh, God. Are you girls going to do anything extreme with me? No. I wonder if that guy will. Hey, you. You want to race? I sure do. On your mark. Get set. Go.
Wrapping up our time here at Shaw Family Park with a little bit of relaxing fishing. You guys just watch these hooks and who forgot my third pole? Sorry about that. Well, hopefully we'll catch something good. Sorry, Zach. It's not you today. But that's it for us this week. We'll see you next time on Around, Around the, the Corner. Corner. You're saying a lot of mean things lately. Give me the pole. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.